Pelican makes a number of fantastic hard shell cases for photographers and videographers alike. And if you are one like myself, you're probably aware of just how many different models there are to choose from. But in this video, we're going to take a look at the Pelican 1510 and 1560 cases, and actually explore as someone that owns both of these myself, which of these cases might be best for photo and video use. So to kick things off, let's start with the gold standard of Pelican cases, one might say, which is the 1510. Now the Pelican 1510 is a polypropylene case that is made in the USA, and more specifically this case measures in at around 22 inches in length, 13.8 inches in width, and 9 inches in depth. And the case weighs in at around 12 pounds without any contents stored within it. And these dimensions are actually more important than you might think, and we will touch back on them in a bit. Now the case does have rubber molded top and side handles, which allow you to carry this very easily in different situations, but it also does have a set of two polyurethane wheels on it, which allow the case to roll around on a variety of different surfaces. And to further add to that point, this case contains a retractable extension handle that allows you to more easily roll roll this case around, say, in its wheeled configuration. The case is made of very high quality materials, including stainless steel hardware, such as around the padlock protector area, so you can easily tack on something like a master lock or other combination lock and more securely store whatever you're keeping in the case. And the case has a set of double throw latches that are both easy to open while also being very secure when locking it. Now this case is waterproof, crush proof, and dust proof. Pelican tops this in multiple ways. There is a rubber o-ring that surrounds the entirety of the case that prevents water from getting in, as well as a pressure equalization valve that helps with this. And to really add to the quality element to the 1510 and all of Pelican's cases, these are very strong and rigid, but yet still lightweight, all things considered, designs in terms of how the case is constructed. Yes, this is a case that can easily take a tumble or two. Frankly, you can stand on or jump on these things, as you're now seeing. And there's even videos on YouTube of folks driving cars over these things. Of course, I wouldn't recommend that. But simply put, people buy Pelican cases for true peace of mind, and to ensure that whatever you're keeping in it is really safe from all of the different elements and situations that you could encounter. The 1510 truly embodies this and is probably one of the best Pelican cases that exemplifies this philosophy. Now even though we're talking about the 1510, it is worth giving a bit of an honorable mention to the 1535 Air case, which is a very similar equivalent to the 1510, although is made of a different polymer material that results in being around 40% lighter. This case is another popular option in the size category, although while the lessened weight might be a benefit for some, this does result in a bit less rigidity in the body design, and in this case in particular, the retractable extension handle actually eats into the interior space of the case design, whereas it does not in the 1510. So back to the 1510. When we're talking about this case, there are a couple of big things to consider that we're going to also want to weigh against the 1560. And so with the 1510, let's talk about the carry-on advantage. Now I mentioned the dimensions of the 1510 would carry in importance, and this is that. Because the 1510 meets the maximum airline carry-on size regulations that you are allowed to bring with you on a flight. Meaning, this is a case that you can actually travel with and keep with you and utilize as carry-on luggage. So the thousands or tens of thousands in gear that you keep in the case and treasure is not going to necessarily just be lost in a checked luggage situation, but can rather stay within your watchful eye with you on the plane in an above compartment and always within arm's reach. For anyone that is a travel or destination videographer or photographer, this could be a major advantage because this case is going to be a constant solid travel companion for you. And I think this is one of the big reasons this has become one of Pelican's most popular cases over time and is such a bestseller. Yet with the size that has to meet those specific conditions constraints also perhaps comes another caveat. And perhaps most specifically, we will call this the height disadvantage. Now, even though we mentioned the depth or height of this case is around 9 inches, Pelican notes that the interior depth is around 7.6 inches. But of course, that is just with an empty case design. And practically speaking, you're going to have different dividers and perhaps other things in the case that are going to eat into its space. Yes, there are a number of different divider options for Pelican cases, everything from pick and pluck foam to trek pack to the padded dividers I typically use, as these are some of the most flexible and easy to adapt dividers that I find exist. And when you get a Pelican case by default, you're going to get just a standard piece of foam within the lid, which might help to protect some things, but of course, if you don't secure this, this piece of foam is just going to simply fall out. And needless to say, if you want to better utilize the space within your case, you'll probably want a lid organizer. Fun fact, in my case, I think AMOD makes the best lid organizers out there for Pelican cases, but I've really come to love the 1519A lid organizer that I've used in both of my 1510s over the years now. And in fact, I have a full video that covers why I love these lid organizers so much. A link to that will be above and in the description below. But yes, once you've added some form of padding 
or dividers to secure the main contents of the case, and or added a lid organizer to store some additional things, you are now eating into that 7.6 inches of interior space more than you thought you might. And what I've noticed over time is just a lot of common photography and videography gear has a very tight fit or has to be fit in certain ways to accommodate this case. So yes, if I want to save a little bit of space by storing my Sony Alpha bodies on their side, though I can do this in most cases without trouble, once I add a half cage or full cage, this actually starts to rub against the contents of whatever I'm storing in the lid, and in some cases, depending on where this is positioned, might not allow the case to close. But perhaps the biggest issue with height can certainly come within the realm of lenses. Sure, most 70 to 200s are pretty massive, and you're not going to be able to store this vertically within a case, but a lot of Sony's lenses actually come within the 5 inch range or larger, and this means lenses like the 16 to 35 G Master, the 24 to 70 G Master version 1 or version 2, yes, I've tried it with both, or even Sony's primes like the 50 millimeter G Master may have trouble being stored vertically or not be able to be stored vertically at all depending on, again, if you're using a lid organizer, where you position it in the case, and thus in many cases I've had to take a lot of these lenses like the 16 to 35, like the 24 to 70, and store these horizontally. Now you might not think that's a huge deal, but what this ultimately means is that's going to eat into more space because this lens is much longer than it is, say, wide or at its diameter. And so practically speaking, what does this mean? What can you actually store as a photographer or videographer in a case like the 1510? Well, what I've found typically in my case is that I can fit comfortably three Sony Alpha mirrorless bodies, say something like the a7S III, the a7 IV, the a7 III in my particular case, and I can fit roughly around five of Sony's premium G and G Master lenses. Yes, that includes the classic trio of 1635, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200. Now I can also store some other accessories too, of course, like some batteries, a top handle, battery charger, and some other small bits here and there, and of course can utilize the AMOD lid organizer to store a bunch of different filters, step-up rings, and other sorts of accessories around that. And this is certainly pretty impressive, all things considered, given the size of this case. But there is another case we haven't really mentioned as of yet, which is of course, yes, the 1560. And this is where we're going to start to see a bit of a difference when it comes to some of these aforementioned points. So in many ways, the 1560 is going to be a nearly identical case to the 1510. Yes, it is a polypropylene case that is strong and rigid and can take just as much of a beating as the 1510 can. Yes, it contains wheels, the same top and side handles, the retractable extension handle, and has all the different water sealing and weather sealing attributes that the 1510 also has. Really, the biggest difference you're going to notice with this case comes in the form of its dimensions and its weight, because this case does weigh in at around 17 pounds without any contents in it compared to the 12 pounds of the Pelican 1510. So yes, you are getting some added weight with a case that is a bit larger here. But when we're talking about this case being slightly larger, we should note that the Pelican 1560 has an exterior length of around still 22 inches, like the 1510, has an exterior width of just under 18 inches, and an exterior depth of just under 10.5 inches. So yes, really just an inch or two here or there, and in fact in some cases arguably the same as the 1510. It doesn't seem like there's much of a difference here, although this is certainly a case where the minor details make a major difference. So let's talk about a couple of those aforementioned points we noted previously. So while with the 1510 we might have had the carry-on advantage, the 1560 is now perhaps a carry-on disadvantage. Yes, because this case is now ever so slightly larger, this does mean it is not as usable as a travel companion, and certainly is not going to be able to be used as carry-on luggage, or as the 1510 could be. Now again, if you're not someone that's doing a lot of travel or destination gigs for your business or with your gear, then this might not be a major issue. But for those that do often and want to have their gear securely stored and by their side, this is not going to be a case that will really allow you to do that, and you should definitely prepare for this to be checked luggage nearly all all the time. But perhaps to the point of this case being a carry-on disadvantage, rather than perhaps having the height disadvantage we had with the 1510, we might now have with the 1560 the height advantage. So yes, while the 1560 contains almost four added inches in width, which is notable compared to the 1510, it is that extra 1.5 inches in height that I think is truly special. You'll remember with the 1510 and many of those close calls or frankly unworkable situations with storing gear that the height just seemed to be a bit too short in many different areas. Well, whereas the interior height of the 1510 comes in at around 7.6 inches, the interior height of the 1560 matches the 1510's exterior height, which is 9 inches. So suddenly that added inch and a half starts to make a big difference. So yes, now camera bodies stored on their side with a half cage or full cage are not barely clearing the lid when it's closed, but are actually allowing for ample space in between. And yes, that also means for those with larger mirrorless or DSLR bodies, like from Canon or Nikon, you're going to have an easier time storing these bodies in a case like this as well. But remember those different lenses that we had to store horizontally previously in the 1510. Well, we can now take these and confidently store them vertically in the 1560,
60 and reclaim a bit of space by not having to tilt them on their side. Because yes, while you'll still have to store larger telephotos like a 70 to 200 or 100 to 400 horizontally compared to others, we're going to be able to reclaim even more space perhaps than we might have thought we could. So again, practically speaking, what can you store in a case like the 1560? Now while I could fit three of my Sony mirrorless bodies and five G and G master lenses in the 1510, yes, of course I can still fit this within the 1560. But what I've now found is I can also fit additionally accessories like multiple top handles, a side handle, other accessories like an external recorder or monitor like the Atomos Ninja 5. I can at least fit two more larger Sony G or G Master lenses within this case design. I can additionally store larger Sony NPF batteries as well within the case. And yes, much like the 1510, I'm also utilizing an AMOD lid organizer with the 1560. In this case being the 1560A lid organizer, which now contains seven discrete compartments and a zippable pouch on the 15 60 compared to four discrete compartments and a zippable pouch on the 1510. So yes, even more small cables, pocket RGB lights, and many other things that I can now fit within this case because of the larger footprint as well. In truth, if I would say the max of the 1510 for me has been three bodies and five lenses, I actually think the max could be in a case like the 1560 probably four mirrorless bodies and eight full-size lenses. And bear in mind, to almost double the amount of lenses you could store here and add a body and among many other different accessories, that's a case where you might not think an or two here or there makes a big difference, but you do not realize it until you actually try to store your gear within these cases. Now, when it comes to evaluating the price of these cases, you're going to find the 1510 with a series of padded dividers like I have, excluding the lid organizer retails for around $275 US. Essentially, that same exact configuration with the 1560, including padded dividers and no lid organizer, is going to retail for around $330 US. So yes, there's around $55 in difference here between the cases. I don't think this is particularly significant but something you may want to keep in mind that may weigh into your purchasing decision. But now having discussed and compared the two cases, let's try to answer the question. Which of these two Pelican cases is the best option for photographers and videographers? Are you someone that wants the gold standard Pelican case that is known to be the most versatile in terms of its size and flexibility and will allow you to travel with it in myriad situations? That is of course the Pelican 1510 and it has been doing its job for years with most folks and I would highly encourage you to consider that case for that purpose. In fact, there was a reason I own two of these cases today, and I can certainly say they've done the job for me in many cases. But are you someone that maybe desires a bit more space and trying to maximize what you can fit in a Pelican case design, but arguably wants nearly the same footprint that you would get with a 1510, and you're not someone that does a lot of travel or destination gigs, or at least wouldn't mind if your case became checked luggage? This is the main reason I moved to storing my camera bodies and lenses within my 1560, and why it's become my primary case for my video and photo gear. But I still own those two 1510s, and I'm still using one for audio and different light-related accessories, and I'm reserving my other 1510 for other future gear purchases. And perhaps that is a larger point to this whole video. You really can't go wrong with either of these Pelican case models, as they are nearly identical in their features in many ways. But as noted, the devil is in the details, and you certainly might find an advantage or slight disadvantage here or there depending on what your needs are. The choice is clearly yours, but I can certainly say as an owner of both of these cases over time now, I have been more than impressed with what each of these cases bring to the table. So that is my take on the Pelican 1510 and 1560 cases. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. A lot more to talk about camera gear and storage on this channel, so definitely be on the lookout for more videos around that. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.